Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. I wish I could give you my best John Miller <laughs> impersonation, but I'm just not that good. But we are at Oracle Park, home of the San Francisco Giants. We haven't been really done a show here since 2014, so we're excited to be back. Pretty unique event, it's called Sports Tech Tokyo World Demo Day. About 25 companies representing about 100 different companies, really demonstrating a bunch of cool technology that's used for sports as well as beyond sports. And we're excited to have one of the companies here who's uh, demoing their software today, or their solution, I should say. It's Albert Ng. He's the founder and CEO of Misapplied Sciences. Albert, great to see you. Great to see you, thank you for having me. So Misapplied Sciences. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to hear about the debates on that name. So how did that come about? Yeah, so uh, I used to work part-time for uh, Microsoft and Microsoft Research, and one of the groups I worked for was called the Applied Sciences Group. And so it was a little bit of a spin on that, and it's, uh, it conveys kind of the, the way that we come up with innovations at our company. We're a little bit more whimsical as a company, that we take technologies that weren't intended for the ways that we apply them, and so we misapply those technologies to create new innovations. Okay, so. so you're here today, you're showing a demo, so what is it, what's your technology all about, and what is the application in sports, and then we'll talk about beyond sports. Yeah, so misapplied sciences, we came up with a new display technology. Think like LED video wall, digital signage, that sort of display. But what's unique about our displays is you can have a crowd of people all looking at the same display at the same time, yet every single person sees something completely different. You don't need to have any special glasses or anything like that. You look at your displays with your naked eyes, uh, except everyone gets their own personalized experience. Interesting, so is that, you know, how, how is that achieved? Obviously we've all been on airplanes mm -hmm. and we know kind of privacy filters mm -hmm. that people put on laptops, so we don't, there's definitely some changes based on the angle. Is it based on the angles that mm -hmm. you're watching it? How do you accomplish that? And, and is it completely different or I just see a little bit of difference here, there, and in other places? Sure, so at the risk of sounding a little too technical, it's in the pixel technology that we developed itself. So each of our pixels, uh, can control the color of light that it sends in many different directions. So at one time a single pixel can emit green light towards you, whereas red light towards the person sitting right next to you. So you perceive green, whereas the person right next to you perceives red at the same time. We can do that at a massive scale. So our pixels can control the color of light that they send between tens of thousands up to a million different angles. So using our software, our, process, our processors on our back end, we can control what each of our pixels looks like from up to a million different angles. So how does it have an edge between a million points of a compass? What, what, that's got to be obviously it's your secret sauce, but mm -hmm. what is the you know what's kind of the what's going on in layman's terms? Yeah, so it's uh, it's a very sophisticated technology. It's uh, a full stack technology as we call it. So it's everything from new optics to new high performance computing. We had to develop our own custom processor to drive this. Um, computer vision, software user interfaces, everything. Um, and so this is an innovation we came up with after four and a half years in stealth mode. So we started the company in late 2014, and we were all the way completely in stealth mode until middle of last year. So right. about four years just hardcore doing the development work because the, the te technology is very sophisticated. And I know when I say this, it does sound a little impossible, right, a little bit right. like science fiction, so we knew that. Um, so now we have our first product coming on the market, our first public installation later next year, and it's going to be really exciting. Right. So obviously you're not going to have a million different feeds because you mm -hmm. have, to have a different feed, I would imagine, for each different view because you designate uh, this is the view from point A, this is the view from point B, use feed A, use feed B, I assume it's use something like that. Because obviously the controller is a big piece of the display. Exactly, so um, you know, a lot of the technology underneath the hood is to reduce the calculations or the rendering required um, from a normal computer. So you can actually right. drive our big displays that can control hundreds of different views using a normal, normal PC. Um, just using our using our platform. So what's the application? I mean, obviously it's it's cute and it's fun and and uh, you know I told you it's a dog. No, it's a mm -hmm. cat, as you said. But mm -hmm. what are some of the applications that you see in sports? What are you mm -hmm. going to do in your first uh, your first demo that you're putting out? Yeah. So what the technology enables is finally having personalized experiences when in your when in a public environment, like a stadium, like an airport, like a shopping mall. Uh, so let me give an airport example. So imagine you go up to the giant flight board, and instead of a list of 100 flights, you see only your own flight information in big letters so you can see it from 50 feet away. You can have arrows that light your path towards your particular gate. The displays can let you know exactly how many minutes you have to board and suggest places for you to eat and shop that are convenient for you. So the environment can be tailored just for you and you're not looking down at a smartphone, you're not wearing any special glasses to see everything that you want to see. 
So that ability to personalize the venue stretches to you know every single public venue, even in the stadium here. Imagine um, the stadium knowing whether you're a home team fan or a away team fan, or your fantasy players. Um, you can see it all on the jumbotron or any of the displays that are in the interstitial areas. We can have the entire in stadium come alive just for you, and personalize it. Except you're not going to have 10,000 different feet. So, you, so there's going to be some subset of, of, uh, of infinite that people are driving in terms of the content side. Mm -hmm. so, what, so on your first one, your first installation, what's that installation going to be all about? The first installation is going to be at an airport. Okay. Um, I can't say right now publicly where it's, where it's going to be or when it's going to be with what, what partner, but the idea is to be able to have a giant flight board that you only see your own flight information okay. navigating you to your particular gate. You know, when you're at an airport or any other public venue like a stadium, a lot of times you feel like, you know, cow in a herd, right? right? right. And it's, it's not tailored for you in any way you don't have as good of an experience so we can personalize that for you all right misapplied science so i'll come down and check the uh take a look at the booth Absolutely. a little bit later and thanks for taking a few minutes good luck on the uh, adventure i look forward to watching it unfold i appreciate it thank you so much all right he's albert i'm jeff you're watching the cube we're at oracle park on the shores of mccovey cove thanks for watching we'll see you next time thank you